everybody, welcome to Jet Boat Mayhem. I'm Josh. Thank you so much for jumping on watching my video. I guarantee this is going to be very helpful to you um, because I have been absolutely scratching my head trying to figure this thing out and I wondered why does no one make a video on this so I'm just going to do it for you. It's going to be good. So I've, I have not shown this on the channel. This is my big jet boat. Um, I, I have only shown so much of my mini jet boat which I've got more of that stuff coming. Um, it's it's gone through a major overhaul uh, and I just finally got back out on the water so I'm really excited it's right over here and uh, man is it awesome now so I can't wait to show you guys that uh, but today no one has made you know this this is my big jet boat this 23 feet um, it's a Wooldridge Super Sport Drifter I got it uh, last year it's an amazing boat all welded aluminum hull Wooldridge makes incredible boats and I am super just jacked up to be uh, have one of their boats because they're only custom. So uh, I got this at, from the, the the guy who ordered it from Wooldridge. He put it up for sale, and I ended up getting it. And it's a it's so like I said, 23 feet. It's eight feet wide. It's got um, you know a whole bunch of awesome features: full windshield, self bailing front deck. Um, it can go through four inches of water, so it's uh, right up there with the mini jet as far as the amount of water it can go through. It's got a Chevy 350 in it, a Kodiak 350, and then it's got a Hamilton 212 jet. So that combination, you know, uh, is a, it's a great combination. It does a right around, like uh, I'd say right around 42 miles an hour um, currently. So we're going to do some stuff to it. It's going to hopefully bump that up. I'd lo love it to get it to, to about 60, but we'll see. Um, and the other thing is that uh, I've had it for a little while now and you know I had just heard some noises coming from the jet and so it always ran it always had a little bit of a little bit of a hum you know it was kind of loud um, but what I discovered basically uh, eventually it got to a point where I heard some screeching with like metal on metal and if you guys understand about jets you know it's a really simple design um, at least the ones I've dealt with you know, the ones I, I have not had a uh, three-stage jet or two-stage, any of those. I've just had a single stage, which means one impeller. And, um, you know, it's a shaft, one impeller, engine turns the shaft, it compresses water, pushes it out through a little nozzle, and that velocity out the nozzle gives you your thrust. So if you hear metal on metal coming from there, it really can only mean a couple things. And what, what it means in my case is that the impeller is touching the, um, is touching the wall of the pump. Um, which is, uh, which, you know, makes all kinds of stuff, uh, you know, it can, it can make noise. It's lubricated. It also helps it, it loses uh, efficiency. So that's another thing it does. Um, but what I discovered through, you know, and I'm wearing a Southern jet hat, I think it's is it over here. It's on this side. Yeah. So Southern jet, um, in Canada actually helped me out getting the parts that I needed, which is really important. Um, and I will put a, um, uh, if you guys want to email me, I'll put my email in the comments um, and I'll send you the manual if you don't have it. It's pretty widely available. Hamilton can get it for you. Um, but if your boat's got a Hamilton 212, this is going to be the video where I show you exactly how to rebuild the whole pump, which no one has made a video on that. And I think that there's enough people out there that have this type of jet pump that, you know, this could be very helpful. So I'm going to, you know, this is going to be a multi-part series. I'm going to hopefully make it fast, show you what I'm doing. Um, and uh, basically what I've discovered about mine is that the main bearing is out. And so what that means is that the, uh, you know, basically the shaft is able, while it's spinning at, you know, really high speeds, it's able to move up and down, which is why the impeller is hitting. So, so I decided that I'm going to basically replace all the bearings inside and completely redo the pump so that I don't have to deal with this anymore. Uh, in order for you to diagnose your own pump, if you got the same thing going on, um, you know, what I've heard from several people is that if you feel where the main bearing is, um, and it may be difficult to get to, like on my boat, it's kind of challenging to get to, um, but if you run it for a while and feel that, and that's hot, then that's a sign that your main bearing is going out. Mine happened to be the screeching where the impeller was hitting the wall of the jet pump. And it, you know, it's not, it's just, it scratched it up a little bit, but it didn't really ruin anything because I shut it off right away. Um, and uh, so that's how I knew. And then when I tore down the pump, I was able to take the shaft and move it around and uh, it shouldn't have that much play. And so that's kind of how I know. Uh, my pump, my mine is set up with a close coupling system. Yours may be different. So just know that those are, that's the way the pump engages with the engine. Um, and so I'll be showing how that's taken apart as well. 
Um, but if you've got a, a Hamilton 212, this will be a great thing for you to be able to watch uh, and it get taken apart and that kind of thing. So uh, without further ado, let's get into it. So you need some tools. Uh, we're gonna start off by rebuilding the back part first. Um, and so you're gonna need some bigger sockets. Uh, so far, the biggest one I've, well, that's uh, just to take the reverse bucket off the nozzle and that kind of stuff is a 24 millimeter socket uh, for these guys here. Um, which I don't know if you can see them or not, but uh, basically hold the reverse bucket. You're gonna need some pliers. So first thing we're gonna do is get this reverse bucket off. So there's uh, this this uh, piece here that controls the reverse bucket. So this rotates up and down. There's a little wedge here. You're gonna take the take this off, and then uh, this part. Dropped a piece. That's great. You're gonna probably have to hammer that out. Um, this is a wedge piece, and I'll show it to you after I get it out that uh, basically uh, you know, locks these two pieces together. And then you'll take this uh, cotter pin out, pull the washers, pull this off. I'll do that and then uh, show it to you. Show it to you while I do it. So take these off, don't lose any of the parts. This part, cotter pin off, pull the reverse bucket. And be careful because this is gonna come loose when you do that. So you can see this part is dropped off because I had it loose already. It's not going to do that for you, I promise. All right, so that linkage is off. This part, just like that. That's wedged. I bent it a little bit. Right so we'll take that, let the reverse bucket come down. Always reassemble these types of things the way that they came off. Thank me later for that. All right, so that's the reverse bucket linkage. I also am gonna drop the washers and the cotter pin on there because now this whole thing has all the pieces. So then we're gonna take our, our reverse bucket off, which is this, this nut here. This one here, which I already had loose. The reverse bucket comes off. Next thing is uh, this cover right here, which I believe is uh, 13 millimeter. Most everything is 13 millimeters on this. So we'll take these two off. And then that comes off. There's a shield for the steering knuckle, I guess you'd call it. I always put these back so these have their little washers on there. Um, this, this part I already got off here. So that you're gonna need to take out. Just another one of those wedges. We'll undo. These, which are also 13 millimeter. For the steering nozzle. Some of you guys commented and said some things. All right, so, so we got that off, so we're gonna Make sure those two stay together, reassemble them. And then when you pull the steering nozzle off, make sure you reassemble it with the knuckle up. Okay, so four of those, and then we can pull this thing off. So you may have to work it a little because you got a shaft over here, and then you got a shaft over here. These both have to be able to, you know, pull this thing off. So they have to clear, so you're gonna have to baby will come right off like this and there you have your wear ring inside of there which uh, this baby looks a little well a little bad not too bad we'll set that down and then next we've got our impeller um, the bearing sleeve which goes inside the cutlass bearing and this nut here which uh, this one uh, I'll give you the measurement on this one in a second <laughs> 